for the county and what will you do to mitigate the impacts if you see any from the casino? The casino is going in. Um, we, we see it happening. It's going to open. And I, I choose to look at the situation as how can we benefit. I think there's a huge opportunity for economic development. There's a huge opportunity for promoting tourism here in the county. Um, there's a lot of benefit that we can find if that's how we choose to approach the situation. If we choose to approach it from a negative perspective, we're not going to be able to see the benefit. In terms of um, mitigating the, I'm sorry, what's the second part of the question? The impact. Um, there's going to be impacts, absolutely. Um, the Board of Supervisors made a settlement, uh, I believe $191 million. Um, that money needs to be spent the best way possible in terms of how are we going to protect and provide for public safety, for transportation, and all those different types of issues. And as a supervisor, I will continue to do that. I don't necessarily agree with reopening up discussions on the uh, MOU. I think that could cause some problems, but I do think that we need to find a way to work with the casino because we can find some mutually beneficial opportunities that will help both of us. The casino is a reality and um, it will be opened in probably by the end of the year, early next year. 1,200 new jobs plus. Um, the county just received 250 thousand dollars they're going to receive 199 million dollars over the next 20 years um, they're negotiating now for the diff different, dis different fire districts to provide service and uh, we need to make sure I think this is done <laughs> I think I think we need to make sure that they mitigate their impacts and we have to build a relationship between the professionals in law enforcement with the council and make sure that the analysis is correct. And if they're not paying their fair share, they need to pay more. And the only way you can do that is to build a trusting relationship between the sovereign nation, the county, and get key people in there to make sure the numbers work out right. Well, as has been stated, the Indian Casino is a reality, whether we want it there or not. I personally feel that it's too bad that we had to be in litigation with them as long as we were. Uh, I'm not saying that it's right or that it was wrong, but at the same time, anytime you're in litigation with people over a long period of time, there you build a distrust. And I would hopefully that would like to see this in the future to be able to maybe break down some of the distrust so that we can work together to make a uh, better situation for everybody and that we can get the uh, impacts that are going to be coming down the line uh, paid for and mitigated by the uh, people that are creating the problems. I think the uh, Indian Casino is a reality. It's going to happen no matter what. I think uh, the mitigations uh, need to be addressed. I said we make sure that we have that. I think uh, one good thing, I think of a sheriff's substation would be a perfect location for it. Also, a fire station, it has an ambulance service there because it's, hey, you're right on the 50 corridor. It's actually perfect. And getting back to the Indian Casino, let's take Jackson Rancheria, for example. They've done a lot for their community. They poured a lot of money in the schools. They poured a lot of money in the fairgrounds. They poured a lot of money in the seniors. They have helped a lot of people out, and that's what we make sure. I guess that we're going to have a board be informed here pretty soon, and I'm sure that board will make sure that that money gets poured into the right places where it needs to be. As previously stated, the casino's here. It's part of our life. It's part of what we're going to deal with. What we don't know is the day after the doors open what it's going to be like. We don't know if we're going to have the same issue they had at Thunder Valley when uh, Highway 65 came to a dead stop. We don't know how much traffic it will impact back onto Highway 50. We don't know how much crime it will bring into our area. All of these things we don't know. I've gone around and I've talked with people at Thunder Valley. I've talked with people, uh, Brian Onesti down at Amador County, and what he's dealt with down there with the casinos that they're dealing with, uh, the agreements that they have. Uh, I've talked with people out of Cash Creek. All of these people say the same thing. Yes, we know we impact the area. Yes, 
we are going to have to mitigate that. Keep the doors open, have negotiations with them. As issues come up and can be documented, you work with them. You create the safety net for the county. The Deputy Sheriff's Association is supporting me because I'm willing to sit down and talk to them, make sure that they get their support that they need for the extra impact that they're going to have to deal with. Thank you. I'm a firm believer in negotiating it to get to get what you want from it so that everybody works it out and it works out to the best best way possible. So there will be continuing, at least neg not negotiations, at least continuing collaborations with the casino. There is an opportunity for us to get uh, jobs, for people to have jobs there, for, for affordable housing to be built there. So there is opportunities for the county to grow and get some money from it, some profit from it. And I think it needs to be continued to be negotiated and discussed as to how other, what other impacts are